Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to link two separate Qualtrics surveys. Uh, here, I have two surveys set up. One is called Informed Consent and the other is called Session 1. Support George is completing this survey right here uh, and enters his personal information like uh, email, name, and so on. And when he's done with this survey, he is taken to this survey right here. And this survey already recognizes who is taking this survey because it takes that information from this survey. Uh, I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So this is the actual survey. Okay, so this is a survey one. And here you will enter the information. This is actually an informed consent form. And I am asking them to, asking George, for example, to consent and provide his an email and a gender next and then he's taken to the other survey and this is the other survey with that george typing in his name and email address it's already filled because the second survey is linked to the first survey and takes these pieces of information from the first survey. So this is going to be a quick tutorial about how to set it up like that. Uh, to make it happen, there are things you need to do with the first survey and things you need to do with the second survey. So let's first take a look at what I did with the first survey. With the first survey, uh, I went to survey flow and I created two blocks, two blocks called a uh, uh, set embedded data block on top and right here, right before end of survey. And to create these two blocks, uh, you have to uh, find this add a new element here links. Click on the create a new element link and uh, choose embedded data and click anywhere outside and, uh, and you move it, click on the move and you can drag it around the page so you move it to the top. I'm going to place it right here uh, just to show you how to explain how to set it up. And then you would need, you need to set up a variable for a respondent ID. In my case, I called it login ID and you can call it whatever you want. You can call it random ID, respondent ID, or whatever ID or it doesn't even have to call it ID. So I clicked on it, then I call it login ID and click wherever. Then set the value for this login ID and so click set a value now. I decided to use a random five digit number. In that case, you go to insert pipe text and random number. Integer and the minimum is 10,000. Max is five nines. And insert. And click anywhere in the box and voila you have the first embedded data block. I already have this block here, so I don't need this one. Oh, so I'm going to just delete it. So now you have this and you need this as well. Uh, so you create this block again by clicking add new element here and choosing embedded data and click anywhere and you click a move and you can drag it up and you would want it right before end of survey and you will set up just like this. You want to use the same variable. I use the login ID at the top, so I'm going to use login ID again and set a value. Now this value uh, simply needs to reference to this. To do that, uh, click set a value now and click here, insert pipe text and you go to embedded data field then here, drop down menu, login ID you set up up there will be listed here. So this is the, this is the one I set up earlier. Insert and click anywhere in the box. And this is how you set up this uh, second block, embedded data block. And I have it already here and I don't need this. So I'm going to just delete this, the one I just created. And when you're done, you apply, this is 
that means that you're saving it. Then you go to survey options, pull survey, you go to pull survey option, scroll down a little bit, and you go to manage contact list triggers. Here you can create um, contact list trigger. So you need to create a contact list trigger here. It says here, set conditions for adding respondents to a contact list when they've completed your survey. So that's what I did. So I, I set up the trigger so that when George completed the first survey, this information here, name and his email address, were added to the contact list. And that's what this does. So to create that trigger, you go to edit con trigger in. This is a trigger I created earlier. So I'm going to go to add another trigger and show you how I did it. And add respondent to contact list on survey complete. Okay, contact list. I already have this contact list, but since uh, in your case, since you don't have one yet, you go to a new contact list and you create a contact list. You can name it whatever you want to. Authentication for session session A, for example, something like that. And you, you save. And your contact list is going to have these fields and you're going to set up the uh, so in this contact list, first name is taken from the survey question. In my survey, takes a, a respondent name from this question right here, and from this field, last name from the question, and from this question, and this field, and email is taken from a question and from this question and this field. I also needed to add the, the field for the login ID and you can take that from here, embedded data, and you have to manually type in the ID uh, variable and save triggers. Once you set it up, when you go back to edit triggers again, you will have something like this and you can edit it if you want to. And now I'm done with the first survey, so I'm going to publish it. Then you click publish and it'll be permanently saved. Uh, let me cancel though, because I don't want to update any. Now let's take a look at what you need to do with the second survey. With the second survey, again, you would have to go to survey flow. And as you can see, there's a big block right here. And so what you need to do is you need to add an authenticator block at the very top. So click on any of the add a new element here link. Like in your case, you probably find it here at the very bottom. Then choose authenticator then you would click on move and drag it to the very top and you will have to set up this block just like this so i'm going to show you how i did it uh, first of all authentication type it has to be contact and authenticate using contact list and this is uh this is where you choose your contact list you just set up and my library then uh, I have a lot of uh, contact lists, but in your case, you might just have one just created. In my case, this is a contact list I created, I'm using for this these two surveys. And here, authentication fields, as you can see here, external data reference is what you need to uh, select. And here, check pre-fill then here you would enter the id variable you create it and in my case i created login id as a respondent id 
since I don't need, I already have one created here. I don't need this one, so I'm going to just delete it. So now you have this at the very top, and notice that there's a block here with two questions. And this block has email and name. This block is actually this. On the, on the actual survey, it looks like this. This is a this is a block, this block right here. When you are setting it up in the background, it, it is in a survey flow. That's what it looks like. And this question block has to be underneath this authenticator block. And typically you would find it here at this level. What I did was I moved it up. I moved it up. So earlier it was uh, right here, but I, I moved it up like this and you apply to save it. And there's one more thing you need to do. So now you go to the survey builder and you go to that block, question block. It's um, this one right here. Notice I have all these query references here and you would have to do the same if you want these to be pre-filled like this. Remember, uh, when George jumped to this second survey, uh, this question block already had his name and email in, in those boxes. To make that happen, you need these. And to add these, you would have to uh, click on that, go down, and default choices. You set up the default choice for that. And in your case, you know, uh, you wouldn't have anything like that, anything in here. And you would uh, click on the drop down menu and go to embedded data field and click here. And for the first name, you would have to choose recipient first name and insert. And last name, same thing. You would choose embedded data field and here, recipient last name, insert, and save. And you have it here. And same thing with the email. So uh, click inside a box and go to default choices. And you wouldn't have anything here. And in the drop down menu, uh, you go to embedded data field and drop down again and recipient email and insert and you save and, and you want to save it to save it you go to publish and publish it i almost forgot i almost forgot there's one more thing here there's actually one more thing i had to do with the first survey so go to survey flow again and go down to the very bottom end of survey and go to customize and here you choose override survey options then choose redirect to a url and in here and you type in the url to redirect the respondent to this survey right here to the second survey so you you would take the uh, survey url from the second survey you can do that from a distribution so if you go to distributions tab for the second survey and go to anonymous link this is the url of the second survey of this survey right here so i'm going to copy survey link and you uh, i i had to modify the link a little bit and paste it here okay so this is the url of the second survey i just copy from here and paste it here so you can see better so you're going to modify this a little bit and paste it into here. As you can see, up until this point, it's it, it's exactly the same as the, uh, what I just copy and pasted. But it has additional string here. Question mark, login ID, and uh, the query. So I added this question mark 
login ID equals this. And this is basically the, let me cancel it. This part is basically this right here. So when you go to customize and you uh, enable override survey questions and uh, choose redirect to URL, you take the URL from the second survey, but you add this to the URL. So equals the string for the login ID. Okay, so you copy the whole thing and you paste it into here and you say, okay. That's why when George finished this survey, he was sent to the second survey, but with this information attached to it. I did this part at the end, but when you are doing it, you probably do it when you are setting up the first survey, not at the end, but uh, when you are doing this. Now it's time to test it out. To test it out, you go to uh, the first survey and you can get the link to the first survey from distributions. And just like the sur second survey, uh, you would go to anonymous link and you get the, and you can get the URL for the first survey right here. So I'm going to copy this and paste the link and go to that survey and you will test it. And this is the first survey. You would enter uh, the information and I am going to be the Cosmo Crema this time, email CK. So this is survey one and let's hope this information is going to be carried over to the net at the second survey. Redu being redirected to the second survey now and now on a second survey. Voila, success. So that's how you do it.